से जग विधि हर रहे वैष्णव चाय जो जानी दा जानी दे कीर्तन जग्य सर्व जग्य आर्य Here in this jagya, this kirtan jagya, all the different Vaishnava charyas are taking, are coming, and everyone is welcome in this kirtan jagya. This is a very, very amazing jagya. Hmm? It's said by Mahaprabhu in the last line of this song. Jagya kale kale deha gare gare. How do we do this jagya? Deha, gare gare. You go from house to house. We were commenting the other day. It doesn't say deha mandire mandire. From temple to temple, it says from house to house. Why not from temple to temple? What's wrong with temples? Temples are very good. We need temples. And in our culture, in our history of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, the temples were there as places of education and places for festivals. But in our line of Prem Bhakti, where we want to cry out to the Lord, we want to experience something deep, something genuine, that takes place best in an intimate situation. Gare Gare. Mandir is not so appropriate. And therefore we follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In Gauralila, in Jagannath Puri, he taught us how to do bhajan. He opened a school of Braj Prem, a university of Braj Prem in Jagannath Puri, teaching us how to cry for Krishna. Krishna himself came and cried, teaching us how to cry for him. And in that Leela, he showed us that it's important to keep two places. There are two significant places of Gauralila, the main places of Gauralila and Jagannath Puri. What are those places? Can you say? Tata you were in Jagannath Puri with us? Tata Gopina Temple. Tata Gopina Temple, sometimes he was going there. Shira. But it's... Hmm? Shira. Shira. Gambira, a lot, and the Jagannath Mandir. Halochan Das Thakur and Chaitanya Mango, I, I did some research on this. I went through all the different biographies, well, there are many biographies. I went through about six or seven biographies, some of which you've probably never heard of, looking for descriptions of the deities that Mahabharata was visiting. And Jagannath came up like, thousands of times. Tota Gopinath came up a few hundred times. And then other deities, practically, you no. Know, after Tota Gopinath, probably the next would be... Uh, all or not, Brahmagiri. And then after that, there's a little, little mention of Sakshi Gopal and a few other deities. And in Chaitanya Mangal, Lochan Das Thakur says that Mahaprabhu was going three times a day to the Jagannath Mandir. This is another big subject we speak of. Many of you were with us in Pori for our retreat there and took us a week to get to the point where we could explain why he's going there every day, so I won't. If we sit here for a week, then we'll miss our train tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, that's another topic. But, um, that Jagannath Mandir is very important. And the second place is the Mandir. And Siddhapakul is there, and, and uh, Haridas Thakur Samadhi is there, Janjapitamat is there, many different places, Totagopinath, many places in Pori are there. But especially these two places, the Jagannath Mandir, and the Gambira. So, this is not just only the Lord's pastime, but in Jagannath Puri, he's doing a Charya Leela. He doesn't come to be a deity. That's why he doesn't wear a peacock feather. That's why we don't worship him as Krishna. He's not coming to be Krishna, he's coming to cry for Krishna. In the mood of Radharani. So, his pastimes, we should understand all of them, although they're meant for the Lord's pleasure, they also have some significance to teach us. So many lessons may be there, no doubt, from the Lord's visits to the Jagannath Mandir and 
to, into Gambira. But I would suggest one lesson that we can learn that's very valuable for us. If we want to aspire for Vrindavan, if we want to enter into the Jagannath Puri University of Braj Prem <laughs> that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu established, then we should behave in that way. We should learn what he did. He had two sides, the Jagannath Mandir side and the Gambira side. The Jagannath Mandir side means his public face where he supported religion. And he went to the big temple, not once a day, not once in a while, not just for Janmashtami. Sometimes that goes on <laughs> in the West today. But he was going three times a day to the Jagannath Mandir. So from that we can learn a lesson that we should support public worship of the Lord. It's important. But at the same time, he had the Gambira side. In the Jagannath Mandir, it's so crowded, sometimes you could hardly see the Lord. One time Mahabharata climbed the shoulders of one woman next to the Guru Stamba so that he could see Jagannath. It's a very crowded place. But the Gambira, there's only very few devotees. Srup Damodar, Ramananda Roy, Govinda, some say Raghunath Das Goswami sometimes. Three or four devotees. And there in the Gambira, he was relishing something else, something private. Goralila is like a cake. Okay. Does anybody here like cake? Brenda, Sridhar, do you like cake? Yes. If you pray very hard in the kirtan, then maybe some cake will appear to you. <laughs> We have to pray very hard, okay? We're very lucky our friends Brenda and Sri are here today. The cake will talk to you then. <laughs> so Goralila is like a cake. Now any expert person like Brenda is Brenda's expert at cake tattva? Yes? Any person who's expert in cake tattva, they know that a cake has two parts. Right? It has the... Um, the wheat part, and it has the sweet icing on top. Both things are required for a really good cake. If you don't have some icing on the top, it's not as good. And if you only have the cake part, it's a little dry. But if you try to only have the icing, it's too rich. So Goralila has these two aspects, a general aspect which is for everyone. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did not speak about Radharani or Gopi Bhav in public. That was for the Gambira Leela. In public, he spoke about Dhruv Charit, Prahlad Charit, basic things about the chanting of the holy names. But in private, in Gambira, he spoke about Shimati Radharani. In our Vaishnav Sangha today, and I'm speaking in a very broad sense. Our Vaishnava Sangha doesn't just mean the devotees in this room. It doesn't just mean the devotees in Rotterdam or in Holland or the devotees in ISKCON or the devotees in Shilabhaka Siddhanta's line and ISKCON. It means all Gaudi Vaishnavas. It means the Babaji's and the Goswami's and so many different Paribars. In our line, there are different moods. Huh? Some Vaishnavas don't mind me saying this, but sometimes Iskand does a little like this and go to the mud. They're a little afraid of the icing. And they emphasize the the, uh, the cake part, the, uh, what would you call it, the wheat part. Mm -hmm. Because the, the icing part, we're not qualified for that. They say like that. And then some other Vaishnavas, some, some at Radhakum and some other places, they emphasize the icing part. And they say, we don't want this other wheat part. <laughs> we have two opposites. I would like to suggest that both are required. If you only have the lower part, it's very dry. But if you only have the icing part, it's too rich. Your doctor, she'll only eat the icing, right? <laughs> she'll leave the rest of the cake. But how much icing will she eat? And then she gets some loose motions or something, she becomes sick. We can't digest that part. Both things are required. 
So we need to have a public face of the Jagannath Mandir and a private face which is like the icing of the Gambira. And that has to go on in our heart. If we don't do that, if we don't understand these two aspects of Gauralila, how will you get the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't come here just to teach about vegetarianism and, and reincarnation. As some people, they think something like that. Madness. Gauralila, Gauratattva, is the highest tattva in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. It's the most difficult, most confidential thing there is. There's a Bahiranga aspect of it, an external part, and an Antaranga aspect, an internal part. And we should become Antaranga Bhaktas, internal devotees, not Bahiranga, not external persons. Bahiranga Bhaktas, they'll say, oh, who's your Guru Maharaj? Who are you initiated by? And then they'll judge you by who you're initiated by. How can you tell? If I tell you who my Guru Maharaj is, and then you think of me in, in connection with him, you're wrong. Because he's in one way, and I'm in another way. I, my only connection with him is I receive some mercy from him. And I have to acknowledge that. But otherwise, Sanatan Goswami says, Go by a Guru Matmanaha. Hide your Guru. That's what a high class person does. Doesn't mean we deny our Guru. Doesn't mean we don't help our Guru Maharaj preach. Doesn't mean we don't make his books and distribute them. But it means my relationship with him is a private thing. I don't show that to everyone. That aspect is Gambira. And we have to have that. Gambira means something hidden, something deep. There has to be a part of our heart where there's very few people allowed inside. Only very intimate persons. Otherwise, how can we get the full mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? And how will this movement go on? If all that we do, we give Srimad Bhagavatam classes and speak from the Bible, ten different reasons why the Bible says we shouldn't eat meat, you're going to get Gora Kripa from speaking about vegetarianism like that? How many people here are vegetarian? Miso. Are you a vegetarian? No. no? Prasadari. Prasadari. Oh, very good. <laughs> it's very important to be vegetarian. Nobody here is a vegetarian. We're making a formal announcement. You should be vegetarian. It's good for your health and like that. Okay. That's an important thing. But that's... We have so much, much more to speak about. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give something much, much greater. And if all that we do is we stay in this thing, we, we insist that I'm going to stay in primary school forever and ever, then how will people be attracted to this movement? We have to teach also something higher. We have to understand something about Gambira Leela. In the song we're singing, it states, E Jagu Kali Kali, Deha Gadi Gadi, from house to house. We're saying, at the Gambira, and this movement's going, Taruka Sakala Lok, Patita Pamri, Taruka Sakala Lok. This Nam delivers everyone. Uttama, Adrama, Kichu, Nabachila. Those persons who are Uttam, they're high class people, and those persons who are Adam, very low class. Shri Titani Mahaprabhu doesn't make a distinction. He freely distributes Krishna praying to everyone. In Yajna, Yajna Vai Vishnu, Yajna is recommended in all Vedic literatures. Every yuga has a Yajna. We were speaking about that in our first session. And now we want to try to make a circle, a mala, maybe a, a Nam Prem mala, and go back to that original point and elaborate more on it Every yuga has some jagya. And every yuga, uh, there's some process by which the living entities can worship the Lord. And we're taught to respect the devatas. And Chaitanya Sikshamrita <coughs> Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Vaishnavas should respect all the demigods. And they should never criticize them. This is the nature of a Vaishnava. So Taraka Salakala Lok, Patita Palmari, in this age of Kali, this Nam Sankirtan, it delivers everyone. In different ages, the process was Agnihotra, or deity worship. 
But in this age, Kali has come. And Kali, as we were describing, I think yesterday, Kali cannot be kicked out by your temple worship, by your fire juggies, by your twisting your fingers. Mm -hmm. Kali's not going to be impressed that you can do some mudra, <laughs> that you know some mantra, that you're a religious person. Something more is required. To defeat him, we have to chant Krishna's name. In yajna, all the different devatas, they get some share of the yajna, and they get some benefit, because they're considered to be angas, or limbs, of the Lord. They're the Lord's representatives. Ete chamsukala pumsa, Krishna's two Bhagavan swayam, indrari yakalam lokam, mudayanti yuge yuge. This verse is called the Charma Shloka, the most important verse of Srimad Bhagavatam by Jiva Goswami. It states that Eti Chamsa Kalapum Krishna is to Bhagavan Swayam. Krishna is Bhagavan. He's um, the source of all different incarnations. And the verse states also that Indra Rivyakalam Lokam Vidyanti Yuge. Again and again the Lord comes to save Indra and the Devatas. But as we were saying yesterday, Atta Turamula Nisechanena Tripyam Titatskanda Bajo Pasakaha. When you put water on the root of a tree, all the branches and leaves become satisfied. So when we do this Nam Jagya, you don't have to do Deva Jagya. And in fact, you shouldn't do Deva Jagya. And therefore, in our first session, we spoke about how it's Nam Aparad to do. Um, some other type of jagya, to take shelter or something else, because nam jagya satisfies everyone. This is described by uh, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur in Chaitanya Bhagavad. Chaitanya Bhattare Krishna Prime friend Brenda. Did you recite some Srimad Bhagavatam verse in your room? You did. Did you see Krishna come? No. He was there. You just didn't see him. You keep reciting. Maybe you'll see him. And when Krishna comes, he doesn't come alone. Chaitanya Avatari, Krishna Premi looked to him. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give Krishna Premi to everyone, the Deva said, Uhu, we, we're not going to wait for some ablation in the fire. They personally, Brahma, Shiva, Sunakari, Prithiviti, Jamiya, they took birth here. Uh -huh. Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, the four Kumaras, they all took birth in this place to take part in the Sankirtan movement. Narad Muni, Prahlad Maharaj, hmm? Swayam Bhuvamanu, and other persons, they all came in this age to chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare So many different Devas and Rishis, they all came down in human form and they took part in that kirtan. And Brinda, what were they chanting? Hare Krishna.
what to speak of other people. Anyarakata kekata. Apane Brajendra Nandan. What to speak of Brahma and Shiva and the four Kumaras and Lakshmi Devi, Prahlad Maharaj, Lord Brahma, who are coming and doing kirtan. This kirtan was so ecstatic that Krishna himself came. And what was Krishna chanting in that kirtan, Brinda? You know? Hare Krishna. Krishna was so attractive that anyone who chants it, even Stavara and Janga, huh? the moving living entities, huh? the dogs and cats, they're also chanting Krishna now, sometimes. And even the trees. You were chanting to a tree last night? Yes. <laughs> no, you didn't talk to him? Even the trees, huh? they're also getting Krishna praying. And he says, even Krishna himself. Even Krishna himself, he's coming and taking part in this uh, kirtan, this nam prem yagya. Mm -hmm. This nam prem yagya is such a special thing, it's a very different kind of yagya. And it's a very different kind of kirtan. In every Kali Yuga, there's always, kirtan is the Yuga Dharma. But this Kali Yuga, something's different. My groomers liked a particular verse very much. In this Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he spread this kirtan even amongst the Chandalas, us. Nama Prema Mala Ganti Parya Samsari. He made a mala, a garland, out of the holy name and praying. Now, this is a very uh, difficult thing to understand. Huh? In Kali Yuga, in this Divya Yuga, Lochan Das Thakur sings. Kijabi, Kijabi, Bhai, Bhai, Sindhu, Bhai. Kali Krishna, Vyati, My dear brothers, kejabi, kejabi bai. When you have something very sober to say to someone. Prabhuji, mm -hmm. it's not good. You shouldn't be sitting and eating boga in front of the World Series, watching on television, <laughs> and chanting you around at the same time. <laughs> so you go up to him because you're not his guru. So you put your arm around him. Me so bai. My dear brother. <laughs> so he has something very heavy to say. Kejabi kejabi bai. Baba Sindhupar, my dear brother, who is going to cross this ocean of birth and death? You should understand that Danya Kali Yuga is Chaitanya Avatar. This is Danya Kali Yuga, not an ordinary Kali Yuga. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come. Take advantage while you can. And this Nam Yagya that he does, which takes place in every Kali Yuga, is not the same as other Yugas. This is Nam Prem Yagya. And this Kali Yuga, Krishna, Prem, and Nam are all together in one. Krishna, 
Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Prem, and Krishna Nam have all come in one package, all bound up together. <coughs> because Sankirtanai Kapita, oh, Kamalaya Taksha, the father of the Sankirtan movement, he's not just Krishna. He's something else. He's Krishna plus something more. Bhakti Naipunya, to the last limit of bhakti. He's Rasaraj Krishna plus Madanakya Mahabhava Mayi Radha, combined together. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Nahi Anya, Radha Bhava Duti Suvali Tam Nomi Krishna Surupam. He's Krishna, but he's in Radha Bhava, and Radha and Krishna become one. So, uh, Abhinatha Namanamino, Krishna's not different from his name. In every yuga, he's always not different from his name. But in this Kali Yuga, this Maha Mantra, this Kirtan Yagya has something more. And we should understand it. We should understand it very deeply. And the wonderful Bhuta, astonishing opportunity that we all have before us that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give. He's a combined form of Radha and Krishna. And as he's a combined form, the Yuga Dharma that he's coming to give, the Maha Mantra that he's coming to give, is also something more. It's Krishna plus Krishna Bhakti, Bhakti Naipunya. This holy name is Krishna, but within that holy name, Nama Prema Mala Gandhi Parya Sansari, he also mm, wove Krishna Prem, ecstatic love, into that. So how that is, why that is, what is the Prema Nam Kirtan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It's a very, very big subject matter. We raised a question yesterday, which we didn't touch on. And many things, some devotees, just by the way, are asking us to speak about the seven flames of the Sankirtan Jagya. I'm not going to have time today. That's a whole other subject. We wanted to go to the conclusion of our topic. And that's another topic. This topic is actually something a little more to speak about today. The question arises, <clears throat> Brenda, you can help me. I have a question. Who is more powerful, Krishna or Radharani? Radharani? You just sang it because you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. Huh? In our line, this is a very high thing, it's a confidential thing. We're not going to speak about it, we'll just give it a title and identify the title. It's called Bhava Lasarati. When you have, the Bhagavad says, when someone has equal or more devotion to Radha than to Krishna, we're on Radharani's side. We're on Rupa Manjari's side. More than Krishna's side. The Gujaratis, they like to sing, what's this song? Radhe, Radhe Radhe Sham Miladhe. We don't like that song. We sing Sham Sham Radhe Miladhe. <laughs> you understand the difference? Radhe Radhe uh, Krishna Miladhe. They're singing like that. Oh dear Radhe Rani, please send us Krishna. But we don't pray like that. We play Krishna Krishna Radhe Miladhe. Oh dear Krishna, please give us service to Srimati Radharani. That's our mood in Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And that's why Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they don't sing that particular song. And it's not because it's so bad, it's Krishna and Radha's names. But, so the question comes, if Radha is better than Krishna, if my friend Brenda is correct, that Radharani is even superior to Krishna, and Vrindavan Das Thakur, Krishna Das Kavish Goswami, you know, say that, that's a big subject, we won't go in that direction exactly now. But if we accept that, and we do, then why do we chant Krishna's name? Why, do we, why don't we chant Radharani's name? In a similar way, why do we chant Krishna's name? Why don't we chant Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name? And there's some people who say, Ooh, I have a secret, I have something better, something better than what Prabhupada gave, better than what Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati gave, better even than what Rupa Goswami gave. You chant Gorana. Because you chant Krishna's name, it's very difficult. Very difficult. Ten offenses are there, it's a big headache, how am I going to do this? But you chant Gorana, no offense is there. 
So they say, you better you chant Gora now. And they're speaking like this. It's nice. We, we don't, we appreciate that. Any name of the Lord, someone chants, we appreciate. But there's a reason why our Sampradaya places emphasis on the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, on the names of Krishna and not the names of Guranga Mahaprabhu, on the names of Krishna and not the names of Radharani. We should understand this. This is a very deep and a very esoteric point. This is some Gambira Tattva. We want to speak that thing. If we only speak Jagannath Mandir Tattva, that's okay. But you won't ultimately be satisfied. And our relationship won't be so close either. So we're coming today. We're, uh, we were saying to Babuji earlier, we're trying to carry a deity. Sometimes you go to Sri Rangam or some place and you see they have a palaquin and they're carrying a deity. So the speakers of Krishna Kata and our Gaudiya line, they're palaquin carriers. That's all they are. They're not, in that sense, very important persons. They're just carrying something. And according to the vision of the public, there's a certain deity on that palaquin. According to the adhikar, the audience, the greed of the devotees who are present, a particular deity will manifest amongst them. Many devotees may see Lord Narayan. And if some devotees are very fortunate, they may see Krishna. If some devotees are very, very fortunate, they may see Radha Krishna. And if they're the most fortunate, they may see Gauranga Mahaprabhu on that palaquin. So our duty is not, we're not the speakers, but we're just trying to carry this thing. And the listeners also have some responsibility because according to your greed, the intensity of that, then a particular deity will come on that palaquin. So this is our jagya. We're doing this Krishna Kata is also Nam jagya. It is Nam Mahima. In our first session, we spoke about that. I won't go elaborate in that direction again. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta said, for those of you who weren't here, that uh, just as Krishna always has his Sarup Shakti with him, his Ligini uh, Shakti, excuse me, his, his internal potency, Srimati Radharani, you can't separate them. And if you try to worship Krishna separate from his internal potency, it's wrong. So he said similarly, Krishna Nam also has an internal potency. And the internal potency, the concert of Krishna Nam, is Krishna Kata, Hari Kata. Because Krishna Kata in this age is meant to glorify Krishna Nam. So, this is our kirtan. We're, we're doing some Krishna kirtan by also speaking Hari Kata, not just Krishna Nam, but also some tattva, some Nam Mahima about this thing. And according to the audience, you're also members of the Jagat. We have one Hotri who's pouring ghee in the fire and chanting the mantra. And then you have other people who are also responding to the mantra. And in this jagya, everyone has a place. And in this jagya, it's not that one person is better than the other person. Everyone is qualified. We ask a question sometimes. Who is more important? Misha. Who is more important? A qualified speaker or a qualified listener? Both. We don't allow that. One or the other. The listen is very tricky. <laughs> what do you say? Listen. Listen. Use it because he's a speaker, so he, he wants to say that also. <laughs> Use it, the devotees say, the speaker is the most important, and that way they can sleep in class. No problem. It's your fault. <laughs> you have to speak. I'm just here to sleep. <laughs> you speak, I sleep. <laughs> right? We think like that. But actually, if we consider the matter carefully, in this nam prem yagya, the most important person between the speaker and the listener is the listener. How is that? Because jay rupa chin jay say rupa, why according to the mood of the listeners, the devotees, Krishna manifests a corresponding form. For example, Srila Prabhupada is the most wonderfully qualified speaker. But when Srila Prabhupada went to Paris one year, the devotees arranged a program, and many university students came, and hippies. And for those of you who live in here, you know something maybe about French students. They're, they like some Viva la Revolution. That's their mood, I think. So they liked the kirtan very much, and they were dancing. 
And then the devotees brought out this huge Vyasa sign, like this high, for Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada sat down, and he was starting to give his class. And then the students started shouting in French. And Prabhupada asked one of his disciples, what are they saying? We were telling Prabhuji this the other day. And Prabhupada became, or the devotee became a little shy. He didn't want to say what they were, because they were saying very bad things. He said, well, Prabhupada, um, they're saying you should get off the seat. And who are you to sit up there? And things. Then Prabhupada said, then just do kirtan. And he stopped the class. There was no Krishna kirtan, because they were not qualified listeners. They had some qualification to hear Nam, but they couldn't understand Nam. And they didn't have a deeper understanding. They had an opportunity to have a deeper understanding of Nam from Srila Prabhupada. But because they weren't Nirmatsaram Satam Vedam, they weren't free from envy, they were critical, therefore it didn't come out. So we understand in this example the listener is more important. Similarly, I think many or all of us perhaps have had the experience sometimes of distributing a book or speaking something to some new person about Krishna. And many times they ask some question and then we become astonished at the words that come out of our mouth. They ask a very nice question, and we say something. You think later on, wow, how did that come out of me? It came out of me because of the person who was asking. Because the listener is more important. Because of their greed, Krishna is in our heart. He inspired something to come out. So in this non praying yagya, there's both a kirtan leader and a group of chorus of devotees singing. Both are as important. But of the two, actually the chorus is more important. So I got a little sidetracked. So why is it that we chant Krishna's name and not Radharani's name? Mm -hmm. It's said that once some devotees came to Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta and they were glorifying one god brother. Guru Maharaj, he's become so advanced and now he's staying at Radhakul and he's just chanting all day. Radhe, 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 Radhe. He's not even chanting Krishna's name anymore. He's just chanting Radhe, Radhe, very advanced. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said, oh, very good. Do you know what will happen if you chant the name of Radha, Brenda? Do you know what will happen? If you chant the name of Radha, some person comes running behind you to follow you. Rasa Dukcharana Deva Spito Bhavati Madhava Das Dukcharata Paschad Dhavateva Sasambrahma When you chant the first syllable Ra, Krishna hears it and he stands up and becomes very excited and he becomes completely ecstatic. And then when he hears the second syllable Da, he starts running after you. If you chant the name of Radha, Krishna will come running after you. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he said, hmm, he quoted this, Rāśabdam gavatas trashto dadāmi bhaktam uttamam dāśabdam gavata paschat yāmi śravana lovataha. He said, the moment I hear the syllable rā, I grant them prem bhakti. But then the next moment when I hear the syllable dā, I completely lose myself and I become intoxicated in rādhanam. And I run after those devotees who chant rādhanam. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said, it's a very great thing to chant Radhana. He said, but we have a better program. Mm -hmm. We chant Krishna's name. And someone else comes running. <laughs> you understand, Brenda? If you chant Radha's name, who comes running after you? Krishna. So then if you chant Krishna's name, who comes running? Radha. This is the kirtan of our sampradaya. Now, our sampradaya is meant to try to please Srimati Radharani. The crest jewel, the hidden secret in our sampradaya is Manjari Bhas. And again, we, can't, we won't speak about this thing. We have no Adi card. But we'll give it a label and say something about it so we can see the direction we're trying to go in. It's not Saki Bhav. It's not the same as the the gopis for her, but the manjaris want to assist Radha and Krishna, the gopis. They want to bring them together. Radha, Krishna, Radha.
Together, this is my life. Jivane Marani Gati Arnahimor. In life or in death, I have no other goal than to see Radha and Krishna united together. There's a deep purport to this song. This song expresses this mood of Manjari Bhav. Where the, the, the very young gopis want to bring Radha and Krishna together. My Guru Maharaj. He used to sing a song about the mood of Srimati Radharani. This is a very, very deep song. It said that when Krishna left Braj, he made a promise. He told Radharani that I'll return, I'll return. But then Krishna didn't return. And Radha was waiting so long, so long, so long. And the fire in her heart, that fire or Agni, is called Vipralamba Agni or Vipralamba Jwara, the fever, the fire of separation. It built up and it built up. And just like in the material world, we see in the story of Romeo and Juliet. They couldn't live without each other. And when one of them killed when she, Juliet, thought that Romeo was dead. She killed herself, and then Romeo found her, and he also killed himself. They couldn't tolerate living without each other. So don't think that the love of Romeo and Juliet is greater than the love of Radha and Krishna. It's a perverted reflection of the original effulgent love of Radha and Krishna. So after Krishna left, Radhika became very, very morose. And that Vipalamba Agni, that fire, separation burned more and more. And then one day, Radharani, she called for her companions. <laughs> And she said, in that mud, 
you write the name Sham, Sham, Krishna's name. And then you bring some Tulsi Mandri and you offer them because Abhinat Phenomenami, no. Krishna's not different from his name. You offer those Tulsi Manjuri to that name, huh? Amare Bishtana Kori. Then all of you gather around me and Bolo Sabi, Hari Hari! Hari Hari! Hari Hari! You all chant Krishna's names. And the Jakuna Parana Bhagirai, I'll give up my life. This is the topmost ecstasy of Srimati Radharani. And Krishna became evil. He said, Napari Ham, Miravadya Sam Yujam, Susadu Kritjam, the Buddhaya Sapiva, Yamabajam, Durjaya Geha Shrinkala, Sumitsa, the Pratyaka Sadhana. I don't know how to repay you. I'm a Rini, I'm a debtor. What lady wants to marry a man who has a big debt? But Krishna says, I have a very big debt, a debt of love. Krishna promises, Yegitam nam prapadyante tam satayla bhajamyam. I always reciprocate with my devotees, but Radha, I don't know how to reciprocate with you. Yama bhajam durjaya geya shrinkalai samrichta yatadu pratyatu sadhana. Let your own sadhana be your glory. I don't have the wealth to repay you. So what is the height, the climax of Radha Bhav? This song. Radha Mama's dying condition. And she's feeling so much separation from Krishna. And she's desiring death. My Gurma, as she used to say, hmm, that Gora Bhaja means the desire for death. That's Gora Bhaja. Mahaprabhu, he has that same desire. He can't repay that debt. How, if you have a debt, if I borrow hundred euros from Miso. Then I pay him back in cash. But if I have a debt of love, how do you repay that? If I give you a thousand euros, that won't repay a debt of love. A million euros can't repay that debt. No material wealth can repay that thing. The lover, the beloved has to understand what the lover is feeling. He has to go through those same emotions. Krishna, Sriman Rasa de Sarambi, Vamsi Vata de Taskita, Karshan Venusuna Gopi, Gopi Nata, Sri Estana. He stood at Vamsi Vata and he played his Merli, his flute, and he called for the Gopis. And the Gopis left their families, they left their husbands, they left their children, and they ran in the dead of night to Krishna. They created such a debt in Krishna. How can he repay that debt? He also had to leave his family, his home. So he left Sachimata. He left Vishnu Priya. And he took sannyas. Sannyas in Gauralila means Radha Because Krishna says, Vyavasyatmika buddhi ekiha kuru nandana. Bahu sakayanandasya buddhiyo vyavisaya. On this path, those persons should be, should be ekantic, one-pointed. But is Krishna one-pointed? No. Bahusaka yanantascha. Those persons who are multi-branched, they don't achieve this path. Krishna is so multi-branched. There's no one more multi-branched than Krishna. I saw a cartoon of two devotees, two new bhaktas washing pots in the sink. And one of them asked the other one, Prabhuji, do you know how to do multitasking? It's a popular thing, isn't it? Multitasking, would you right? So the one said, well, I know how to chant my japa and sleep at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our multitasking. But if you try to multitask, if you try to sleep and chant at the same time, or read or chant at the same time, you're bahusaka. You can't get shiva. So Krishna is so much bahusaka. Because the gopis, they're one-pointed. They only want to see Shamsundar Krishna, Dvibhuj Muralidhar, two-handed Krishna with his flute, under the Vamsibhat tree with Radhika. That's what they want to see. 
But Krishna, he reciprocates with the love of Nandan Yashoda, Ratak Patra, Devaki, Vasudev, Bhishma, Arjun, Nakul, Sahadev, so many different personalities. He's reciprocating with all different rasas. But the nature of the gopis' bhav is it's completely one-pointed. So Krishna, to reciprocate with that, he had to also leave his home. He had to run away in the dead of the night and leave Sachimata and Vishnu Priya. He had to take sannyas. He had to come and do kirtan. And therefore, my Guru said that Gora Kirtan is a desire for death. Because sannyas means death. Sannyas means sarvanash. Everything is finished. It means that you're dead materially. If someone takes sannyas, and that person, uh, when he dies, there's no shrug ceremony for him. He's considered to be a dead person. He's dead socially, dead materially. So this is Mahaprabhu's kirtan. He's doing kirtan in the mood of Radha, who is desiring death. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is doing kirtan in the same mood. As Srimati Radharani, she's calling for all of her sakis to come around her and circle around her at that time of death, chant the names of Krishna. By chanting those names of Krishna, Radhika gets some satisfaction, she gets some relief. This is the kirtan of our Sampradaya. And so many of those sakis, they came in Goralila, Sukdama, there's Lita, Roy Ramananda, there's Vishaka, so many different sakis and gopis, they came and they were doing kirtan to relieve the pangs of Radharani. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in the mood of Radha, and he's feeling those same pangs of separation that Radharani's feeling. This is his way to repay his debt. So he's doing the same kirtan that Radharani was doing because he's in the same mood of Radha. If he chants Radha's name, she won't be very happy. If we have a festival for Miso's birthday, and we invite him over to our house, and then on the wall we have big six-foot-high pictures, every few feet, of Miso. And we do kirtan, and we chant Miso's name. <laughs> Sounds good. Would you great, like that? Great. <laughs> great. <laughs> you really would like that. You're an asshole. <laughs> I don't think you would like it. Who would like that? Shimadi Radharani doesn't like that. If the Sakis come and start singing, Radhe, 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 she says, what are you doing making this noise? Chant Krishna, Krishna. And therefore, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's given us an instruction hmm, about Kirtan. He's Sankirtanaika Pitaro. Hmm? He's told us what to do. Hare Krishna, Bhaja Krishna, Gao Krishna, Nam. Krishna, Bina, Keha, Kichu, Baba. My name was Nityananda Das at that time. So Gurmaj gave some translation of this verse, and he said, This is Mahaprabhu's instruction. Utter the name of Krishna. Chant the name of Krishna. Sing the name of Krishna. Don't think of anything but Krishna. Mamanabhav. And then he said, If you really love me, then you love my words. And he pointed at me, he says, Nityananda, Madhavananda. He said, do you love me? Then you love my instruction. And he said, don't chant my name. Chant Krishna's name. So, some devotees think, we'll chant Radha now. Very nice. But we have a better program. Our program is chanting Krishna's name and thereby pleasing Radharani. Some devotees say, chant Gorana. 
Very good. That's nice. But we have a better program. Our program is to please Gauranga Mahaprabhu because he's in debt. He has a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when someone's really in debt, we know in ISKCON everybody's very happy if someone wants to do collection for you. <laughs> Isn't it? We all like collectors very much. Huh? So that's a very fun thing. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has so many collectors. We're all collectors. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was moving trying to collect Nam, 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 getting everyone to chant Krishna Nam, the kirtan of our Sampradaya, to try to help alleviate the pain of Radharani's heart in separation from Krishna, to help Krishna repay his debt to Radharani. He wants to hear Krishna's name. Therefore he says, Jadi Ama Prati Snehataki Sabukar. If you really love me, you'll love my instructions. You'll do what I said. I told some devotees once, mm -hmm. Guru said we shouldn't use a big title. He said we shouldn't do that. We should say Sri Sriman, Gurgavinda Swami. And one devotee said, no, no, that was then, but now it's different. Guru Maharaj is gone now. It's a different time. I, was, I felt very hurt. Are you going to say our Guru Maharaj is dead? And that his instruction was only for that time. His instruction is for all time. And he's present now. He's present. He lives forever in his divine instruction. And the followers live with him. If you really love me, you love my instructions. This is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is a teaching of our Sampradaya. It's very wonderful that we keep Srila Prabhupada in the center. I like that very much. But don't cut off Srila Prabhupada's legs. That's a very horrible thing to say. What do we mean? Don't just worship Prabhupada in a deity form. Shri Guru Charana Padmana Jai Prabhupada, Prabhupada Tisha, Prabhupada Baj. And then one day, there's a knock on the door. Who's there? It's me, Prabhupada. You've been calling me. You go and open the door and you look outside and there's a small Chinese person or a black body person. Huh? You're not Prabhupada. Hmm? No, it's me. I just came in a different form. Go away and close the door. Get out of here. Don't limit Srila Prabhupada. He can come in so many different forms. He's a divine personality. He's not dead. If you think he's dead, he's not dead, you're dead. Man more above, you're brain dead. If you think your guru is gone, he's still alive. And he's in kirtan. He's in the holy name. And if we do that kirtan, then we'll connect with him. He was speaking something about this yesterday. So he says, if you love me, you love my instructions. Don't chant my name. Chant Krishna's name. And he gets pleasure by that. This is Nam Prem Yagya. It's that Yagya, chanting Krishna's name, by which what Krishna himself is doing for the pleasure of Krishna, for the pleasure of Srimati this is the kirtan of our sampradaya. So we'll stop there. It's a little late, I think. Shila Prabhupada ki jai. Shri Prem Burushottam Sachinandana Godahari ki jai. Prem Nandriyo. Pancha Kapadiru Vishyam. Sindhu Vishyam. Ditanam Pavani. Any questions?